Hey everyone, how you doing today? Mary Ellen Vinokin, Susan Jennings, the Real Estate Ladies of North Atlanta. And boy, we have a treat for you today. How are you doing, Sue? I'm doing great. How are you, Mary Ellen? I'm doing great. So we're going to talk about the best tips and hacks for packing and moving <laughs> in your home. This is this has got to be a, a great one here. It's because we all need to know the hacks of how to you know move and stuff. And then we're going to have our neighborhood highlight as usual. And then we're going to talk about what we love about North Atlanta. And then we're going to have some design tips of the day. So let's go and talk about our neighborhood of the day. Well, this is one of my favorite builders we're going to talk about. And it's Peachtree okay. Residential. Okay. And they build a beautiful home. They've built homes in Peachtree Corners and Alpharetta. And now they're building... Arden on Lanier up incoming. And this is like mm. close to Lake Lanier on Pilgrim Mill Road. Nice. Um, that's about exit 16 off of 400. But anyway, it's a lifestyle community there. Um, these homes are priced in the 700s. They are single family homes, not townhouses. Okay. And um, they're just minutes away from getting to the lake, or maybe you'd like to go swimming in the local community, um, you can just enjoy the scenery in the neighborhood as well. It's very, very pretty in that area. But they have 58 home sites. Yeah, um, I actually think the number might be a little bit higher than that, but somehow uh, 58 keeps coming up. And they have a mix of traditional home floor plans and modern farmhouse floor plans. Interesting. That they're priced, like I said, starting in the 700s. They go up into okay. the 900s. Um, they have floor plans that are from 2,500 square feet up into over 4,000 square feet. And that's, um, so they have large open floor plans. And some of them do have owner suites on the primary level, master on the main, in other words, mm -hmm. or secondary level, depending upon right. what plan you choose. They do have gourmet kitchens with stainless steel appliances oversized pantries, breakfast bars, great big islands, and luxurious spa baths with dual granite countertops. Nice. Um, it's close to the city of Cumming, like I mentioned. They have a lot of green space there, outdoor activities. You can get back to nature up and coming, and because there's lots of different parks, and then... Um, you know, coming just has a lot to offer. There's an aquatic center there. There's a lot of shopping, dining, restaurants. And the schools are Chattahoochee Elementary, Little Mill Middle School, and East Forsyth High School. And what I want to tell you is that it's really close to um, coming, city coming City Center. Say that 10 times. <laughs> and that is just another work play. You know, it, it's it's really just a great place where they have restaurants and shops and everything like that. So really all these towns in North Atlanta are starting to have these downtown areas or these places where you can shop and go one place and shop and do restaurants. So I really do like that. So mm -hmm. uh, great location. Um, we're always hitting kind of new construction right now, just to kind of show you what's going on. And uh, if you need more information on that, just reach out to us. All right, so let's get in, dig into, okay, we're moving. What are the moving hacks? What are the moving trip, ticks, trips, tips, and tricks? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had moves of all different kinds in my lifetime, Mary Ellen. <laughs> I think we I've all have, it's everybody, just like whether you're moving, like remember the, like the first time when you moved to from high school when you went to college, that was like your first move. And then after college, and then, you know, as you accumulate more stuff and kids and dogs and animals, <laughs> it becomes, uh, you know, fun. Yeah, well, our first move when we bought our first house was interesting because we actually, on the very first night we were moving, didn't know how to drive a U-Haul and we ran it into a bridge in Philadelphia. So that was really, Oh really my fun. goodness. Yeah, that's probably not yeah. a good thing. Um, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, don't <laughs> do that. <laughs> Here's another thing not to do when you rent your U-Haul. Don't throw your car keys back into the return with the U-Haul keys. 
That Ooh. we've done that one too. So we have a lot of funny stories about moving, but my favorite move was a large corporate move one time where you just open the front door and say, everything goes. And they bring in the corporate movers and they pack everything, even stuff you don't want packed, they pack it all. But we're not, we're, we, we need to look at things somewhere in between because not everybody is a first time mover and not everybody has the luxury of a corporate move. Um, so what should we know to make our move easier? What's the best way to pack your home? Um, how can you stay organized during a move? And what questions should I ask my movers? These are all things, and yes. how much does the move cost, is, are all things that we should be thinking about as we're moving. Sure. So my number one tip is to start early. It's never too early to start, you know, packing and do it pack well in advance and focusing on the non-essential items, of course, that you don't use every day, the things that maybe are, are seasonal and you only use them a few times a year. Pack those things, of course, first. Right. Um, when I moved uh, about a year and a half ago, I had a lot of time until I was actually moving. So I started by packing three boxes a day. I don't know why I came up with the number of three boxes a day, but miraculously by the end of the time period until I was ready to move, I actually had everything packed. So, and three boxes a day doesn't take that much time. Um, you know, I was working full time with Mary Ellen at the time and yeah, Mary Ellen knew I was moving, but it wasn't taking a lot of time out of my day to pack three boxes a day. Yeah. But what you need do before you pack is you have to declutter and we talk about decluttering a lot yeah don't we, Mary yeah Ellen? so we're blue in our face <laughs> right so you want to look through your items figure out what you want to donate what you want to sell what you want to discard things that you no longer need and um that will reduce your load because a lot of these loads are based upon you know the weight of the truck or how many trucks you need or the length of the truck so you really don't want to move anything that you don't absolutely need to move and then number three on my list is make sure you label everything. There's uh -huh. nothing worse in to getting there and saying, I have no idea what box that's in. But um, what I like to do is I like to color code things, as you can tell from my bookcase in the back. Um, I write on the boxes the destination of where the box should end up in what room when the movers actually pick the box up and put it on the truck and then bring it into the next house. Um, this helps the movers tremendously. And you don't have to get real specific with your child's names because they're not going to know your child's names. But what you might want to do is label it as boys room, girls room, um, you know, cat's room, whatever you want to label it, and then make sure you go into your home before your movers arrive and label those doors as to which one's going to be the boys' room, which one's going to be the girls' room, and that sort of thing. Um, I also firmly believe in using post-it notes as well uh, when I'm packing because I go through and I will color code um, different things by where it's ultimately ending up, whether that's a an item to be packed, an item to be donated, an item to be sold, an item to go in the trash. Um, or if you're giving it away to somebody, what color code of post-it note are you giving them? So that's another way of staying organized. Um, one thing you definitely need to do as you're packing is pack an essentials box. Or these are like your toiletries and things that you're going to need and so that you're not like walking out of the house barefoot the last when the last box leaves um you want to make sure you have all your kitchen basics in there your medications your chargers for your electronics equipment and um you know maybe some of these boxes would be boxes you'd want to put in your car ultimately and not have them go yeah. on the truck with your mover so Definitely. And I, and I, and I would just add on to that, that, um, you know, those, those essentials and just keep some stuff in, in your, you know, in your car, because, mm -hmm. you know, how many times, most of the time people are still rushing and they just start throwing things in boxes and they don't even know what's in the box. You know what I mean? Cause they're, they're running out of time. So really right. starting early. I love the starting early part. I love the boxes. Um, also another little hack that I kind of know is if you're looking like, um, go to the liquor store 
and get boxes from them. Those are great boxes to put just like heavy stuff in um, because they're not, you know, they're not so big. And then those are book boxes in my mind. You know, yes. books are heavy. Liquor store boxes are strong. They're smaller, but those are great boxes for your books. And, and I also say for like bathroom essentials, mm -hmm. like like your shampoo and your conditioner and and you know all your. Uh, stuff that you have underneath your your um, bathroom, I always mm -hmm. find that those boxes are perfect for them. And sometimes they still have like the little containers, like if they're like a wine box, they'll have those little sections and you can the put dividers. things in sections too mm -hmm. and dividers. So um, besides that getting, and they're, they're free boxes, right? You know, mm -hmm always go back and and those were great i i remember when um when you're like getting the kids to college and stuff and you're like hey these are great boxes because they're not that heavy you know because not everyone's gonna have the luxury of having movers all the time on every move or they might only have movers for the bigger stuff and they end up right. like when you're younger you're like i'm gonna do it with my friends bring some beer over bring some pizza we'll all move things uh, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> maybe we just have the movers move the big stuff. Right. So right. depending on your budget, depending on what you're doing, those boxes are great. And then, and they're free too. And then getting boxes from either people, you know, that have moved or, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace, you know, mm -hmm. and that tape, you know, and, and little, you know, little peanuts to put in there and stuff like that and wrap things up and, and newspaper used to be popular, but we don't get news. Like who gets a newspaper anymore? <laughs> So, no, I think like bubble wrap, bubble wrap is, is a great thing. And all these things you can get, you can even get it at Walmart and Target and even the grocery mm -hmm. stores have that kind of stuff too. So try to be prepared and order the stuff online first or get it at, you know, Lowe's or Home Depot and stuff, save your money. Cause you know, you're going to spend a little bit more if you're running out the last minute to get more boxes and tape and things right. like that. One of the things I always pack when I move is an open first box. And basically my open first box is a set of sheets for my bed, towels so I can take a shower, and anything else that I might need so that my family can also go to bed that night and take baths as well. So that's what I put in my open first box and I make sure that has big bold letters on it that says open first because that's how we're going to sleep i love night. that that's yeah. a great hack open yeah. first so that you can sleep and have a pillow or something i mean exactly. i know that you always end up shoving things in your in your car like that you really mm -hmm. need right then and there but that's good to have at least that open first box and then like if you need to throw pillows and and that kind of stuff right. throw them in your car yeah right good idea and clear plastic bins always help my moves too because i can see through, through the bin at a glance and just see what's in that bin so that i don't have to you know mm. open every single bin um i know a lot of people like those you know darker bins that maybe have a colored top on them maybe they're color coding their whatever but for closet items in particular those clear plastic bins mm -hmm. are nice because you can put shoes in one and you can put you know other clothing in another and you know which one is shoes without even labeling the box yeah good idea that's a good mm -hmm. good one too that's a good little hat there yeah and i always try to keep my clothes on the hangers um i do like to borrow from the moving company if i can or or rent them i don't necessarily buy them but our wardrobe boxes to hang, you know, your coats or your shirts or whatever you have hanging in your closets in actual wardrobe boxes because they're easy to put together and they're easy to break down and put things right in the closet. So right, and that saves those, a lot of time. That's a that's mm -hmm. a time hack too because. Right. Think about taking everything out of your closet, taking all the hangers off, then you, you kind of have to fold them, put them in a, that's just too much. So yeah. that's yeah. definite, you definitely is worth time and energy to do something like that. Yeah. Right? Now, some movers will allow mm -hmm. you to keep some clothing in your bureau drawers so that you don't have to empty those totally. But I do find that if you have a lot of stairs, um, that's not the best to keep um, the clothing in the bureau drawers because it makes them too heavy to carry them up and down. Now, if your drawers come out of the piece of furniture easily, maybe that will work, but um, it can also damage your furniture by having 
that heavy weight and the piece of furniture being on an angle and going down a staircase yeah, or something like that. So you might want to consider um, emptying your, your drawers, but ask your mover. Um, they, they will have an opinion one way or the other on that. Of course, for they, sure. will. <laughs> mm -hmm. of course they will. Right. So one thing you might want to do with some of that clothing, if you're taking it out of the drawers or off hangers, hopefully not, but instead of buying bubble wrap, you can actually use your clothes to wrap up fragile items. Um, you might want to um, put those things into a plastic bag or wrap a piece of tape around them. You, I would also label them so that you know that your, your blue shirt has, you know, your aunt's whatever wrapped inside it. Um, it, it just, it's a nice way of padding fragile items without paying for bubble wrap. And then uh, we talked about using small boxes for heavy items. Um, also, one thing that I have next on my list is to take pictures of the, the wiring on the back of your electronics as you have, you know, your, your monitor hooked into your lighting or into your computer or your TV that's hooked into, you know, some sort of a, um, you know, modem or something like that that can, can make your TV actually work. Um, something that you'll want to get up and running pretty quickly is at least one TV so that you can entertain the rest of your your kids <laughs> and your family and keep them out of yes. your hair while you're unpacking other stuff. But take photos of how your electronics are actually plugged in. Mm. Um, you can actually label some of those wires as well so that you know that that white wire goes in that particular spot or the one with the, the yellow tag on it goes into the yellow slot. Um, that also will help you put things back together. Um, later, especially if you have like a home theater in your home and it's a little bit more complex of a situation, definitely take photos of how the wiring's done before you unplug it. That's a great idea because I wouldn't know how to do it. I, I luckily <laughs> have a very technology um, amazing husband that can do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But honestly, if I had to do it, I'd, it would take me a long time. And that's another time hack too, as well. Because well, when I moved, when I moved this bookcase behind me, I actually took a picture of it and then I packed it and I labeled each of the small boxes by yellow, red, green, blue. So I knew what color bo books were in which box. But then I looked at my photo and I knew exactly how to recreate it again when I moved it. And what's really so. kind of cool about that, too, is that we all can just take, you know, our phones and take a picture mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. on the phone. So it's yeah. not like we have to develop it or anything crazy like that. So right, you can right. delete it afterwards. So that's right. a good one. I like that. Yeah. So, and just remember, you know, if you're moving soaps or liquids of any sort, wrap them all in plastic first. There's nothing worse than opening a box and finding that your liquid hand soap just leaked all over everything. Um, yes. You know, or even Ziploc bags too. Ziploc Zip bags, bags is a good, is yeah. another hack there too. Those are great is, because you don't have to, you know, go go get some Ziploc bags and then put things in the Ziploc bags and stuff. Mm -hmm. I even do that when I when I travel, like with my little, um, you know, hand sanitizer and, right. and shampoo or conditioner, whatever you bring when you travel. I always put it in a Ziploc bag because. Right. It just gets thrown around everywhere. So that's kind of like being on an airplane, being, you know, in a mover's truck, moving all over the place. So, yeah, good idea. Right. With that. Right. And then I always like to util utilize suitcases, which reduces the need for buying another box for things, mm -hmm. especially clothing. And I also like to use um, large trash bags, especially white ones, if I can. And I always put like my pillows and my mattress pads and any of my bedding, like my duvet and so forth. I always put those in white plastic bags and then box them because I don't want those things to get wet or dirty or... Yep anything Clearly. else mm -hmm. right and if you're if you're reusing boxes which there's nothing wrong with reusing and recycling boxes but you don't know what was in the box before so that's another reason why if it's something that you don't want to get dirty put it in a white plastic bag or a black trash bag first yeah. and mm -hmm. then put it in the the box now one caution is keep those bags separate from whatever you're using for your trash <laughs> <laughs> because you want to move the good stuff and not the trash. Plus, you don't want to throw out anything by mistake. So 
one rule I had was always white bags were things that got moved and black trash bags were trash bags. <laughs> because You're not the movers moving, crazy. moving your old pizza from last night or something. Right? Exactly. <laughs> that's that's but a good it happens let me tell you i'm sure it does i'm sure we, we could probably write a book on moving and stories oh, yeah. of what happened with people right you know yeah and if you if you want some funny stories just talk to your movers when they're there helping you out i'm sure they've got a ton of stories i actually helped a neighbor unpack one time and i'd known this neighbor for years and they had moved multiple times and mm -hmm. i'd been in their, their other homes and so forth but when they unpacked here in georgia I unpacked this small package that had been neatly wrapped in white paper and so forth. And I looked down and here it was an ashtray filled with cigarette <gasps> butts. The movers aren't gonna dump that in the trash. They will wrap up everything in sight. Oh <laughs> Their my job goodness. is that's... not to clean your house. Oh, that's just so oh, that's just not not good. <laughs> not good. Not good. Not good. <laughs> And as you do empty rooms in a house, make sure you're cleaning the room as you're vacating the room and closing the door and labeling it, you know, finished or done, or this room checks the box, this room's complete. Yeah. And that will also help you as well, because you, ultimately you want to, you know, clean and close areas of the house off as you're mm -hmm. getting out the door. Yeah, definitely. So what else can we do to make ourselves organized when we're moving? We can keep a checklist. Um, this checklist can be of tasks that need to be done, deadlines that you need to meet, um, you know, utilities. We always have utilities that need to be turned on or turned off. Um, and anything extra that you need to arrange for your moving services, whether it's um, even a hotel room overnight or pet sitting like we talked about earlier, those are things that could go on your moving checklist just to make sure you're not forgetting anything. Calling schools, you know, changing your address. These are all things that need to go on that checklist. So yeah. the next thing on my list is making a detailed list of what's in every box. It's the inventory, it's the manifest of your move so that if you are sending something, for instance, to storage, you know what you sent to storage because you are going to forget exactly what's in what box. But what if you need to get something out of that box and it, you've sent it to storage? At least if you've kept an inventory of what's in the boxes and like a manifest, so to speak, of where, what things went to, you know, your temporary housing or what things went to your storage facility. If you need to pull an item, at least you know how to get yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a good one too. Mm -hmm. And the next item I have on my list is packing zones within your home. So moves can get complex. Maybe not everything is going to one property on the after you leave this first home that you're the current property you're in so for instance moves can get complicated some of your things can go to temporary housing some of it can go to storage so you want separate rooms in your house for those areas so make your dining room for instance everything in this room is going to my temporary housing everything in my living room though is going to storage so you want to keep those things separate because your movers are going to come in they have the job of loading the truck they're not going to look to see if the next box they pick up is the one that's supposed to go where you think it should be going so assign packing zones in your home and label them well because that way you'll make sure the right boxes get on the right truck and also anything that you're donating and throwing away aren't going to end up on a truck that way either right i'm sure many people have been like uh they move in and they're like where's that shirt and then it ends up going to garbage or goodwill or whatever. So really, um, and, and communicate with the family members. <laughs> yeah. I think that's probably really important too, because, um, you know, they might miss understand what you're like, this box is going to goodwill or this box is going to storage and then they get confused and stuff. So like you said, label, 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 like, right. Really, 
big ma magic markers. Right. And even the day of the move, you might want to have some of those family members have stations. So I had a teenage daughter during one of our moves that her job was to just like be in the garage area to monitor what was coming out and going into the house to make sure that it was getting on the right truck and it was on right. our our clipboard of our list of things. And that was extremely helpful that that was her job for the day. She had that station because one of us had to be inside, one of us had to be outside and um, you can't be everywhere in the house, but that, wa that way, if somebody is in charge of a certain zone, they're not spread too thin. Um, mm. And speaking of rooms, when you do pack, Make sure you take it just one room at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself with taking too yes. large of an approach. Um, tackle one room at a time. You won't feel as overwhelmed. And what I like to do is I like to start on one wall of the house and literally stick with the perimeter of the room and not go back and forth from one corner of the room to another. I like to be very systematic because when you unpack it, chances are you're going to put it in a similar order to the way you had it before you moved because mm -hmm. you're going to set up your next room that those items are going in and probably a very similar way because that's how you remember where things are. Right. It's kind of like that, you know, you just have a, a memory, you know. <laughs> so... Mary Ellen, what questions should we ask our movers? Oh my goodness, that's so important. So when it comes to movers, just like any kind of contractor, I always say to everyone, please get three quotes. Th mm -hmm. Talk to three different movers. You are going to get prices all over the place. You are. And I think what's important is asking them about, uh, well, first of all, you have to really, I think you have to Google them and you have to look at their reviews before you even get them to an appointment. So the, I would do my research on that and talk to people who've used that specific mover and their experiences. You know, sometimes things will happen. So you're going to see some, some really good reviews and some not so great reviews. But overall, I think when someone comes in the door, I think you have to have a list of questions for them and you have to feel confident in what they can do, you right. know? Right. So there are different types of movers that offer different levels of service. So what you want to do is ask your mover what services are included in the quote that they're giving you. Right. Because, because you don't want to be like all side, like all of a sudden, well, it's going to cost you, you know, a hundred dollars more for three boxes or whatever, or if we do mm -hmm. this. So like a lot of them will have like, um, a schedule of services. That's why I always say it's really mm -hmm. important to pick three and then research them online and see what's online so mm -hmm. that you know, and you have it printed out, like, this is what you say our level of services for this and what it is for that. And make sure you're asking all the right questions on how much of a move you want, right. how specialized you want, right. And, and what you want, what you expect from them. Because some movers will, you know, of course, they charge you for all of this, but they will do all of your packing. They will do all of your unpacking. But there's a price to that goes along with that. Um, what amount of loading and unloading will they do for you? What level of the house will they take something to? What will they dis need to disassemble and will they reassemble that? Like, you know, the legs on your dining room table, for instance. Um, and, you know, just ask what pieces of furniture, you know, are included in that assembly and disassembly of things versus others. Um, ask if there are any extra fees. Um, these are potential extra charges, um, like stairs, for instance. Uh, if you're moving a piano or something, stairs are a big deal. Uh, if there's a, you know, a long carry or bulky items or narrow driveways, are there charges for these things? And also, if you live in a very tight neighborhood, sometimes they can't bring the big trucks in and they have to use smaller trucks and shuttle out to a larger truck. So those are the questions that you need to ask and what are those extra fees associated with that? One thing that's very, very important and people forget to ask the question is, as a mover, do you provide insurance? And if you do, 
what's covered and how much uh, is the insurance policy for. Um, maybe you want to get additional coverage for valuable items like your piano and things like that. Um, that is yeah. definitely something you should know the values on your expensive items and make sure they're covered. Talk to your homeowner's insurance uh, as well because some of the homeowner's insurance policies, because you've sold the house, aren't going to cover beyond the closing date for X period of time. That's an insurance company by insurance company thing. So it's something you definitely want to make a phone call about. Um, always ask how long the move will take and get an estimated timeline so you can plan accordingly not just on the move out end of your move, but also on the move in. What if you need to get some carpet put in the house or have some painting done on your new house before you move in? You need to know how you're logistically going to manage all of that. And right. so that's why you want to ask these questions. Also, if you're in an elevator building, you want to ask if there is, uh, you know, just if they only have access to the, the regular elevator in the building, that will slow down your move. And so you need to find out what pieces of furniture will or will not fit in the elevator and how long that whole trip process is going to take. Um, the next question I have on here, are your movers employees or are they subcontractors? This is important to know because it details how much training those individuals may yeah. or may not have. One right. of the reasons why when I do a move. I like to use Atlanta Peach Movers. There's no tree in their name. It's Atlanta Peach Movers. They are the movers for the Braves um, here in Atlanta, but they also do, um, you know, local moves in the Atlanta area. And they actually have a, a house where they train their employees to pack and unpack, load the truck and so forth in that house and make them do it over and over and over as part of their training before they unleash them on your house and your belongings. So I always know that those employees are well-trained and that means a lot to me. Um, of course, there's probably a cost difference between the movers that are just, you know, two guys in a truck versus somebody like an Atlanta peach mover. But that's up to you and your budget and, you know, what you want. What do you do, though, if something gets damaged? How is that handled? Right. It, that's, you know, that's a huge question because mm -hmm. people, I mean, you hear horror stories all, and they damage this and they damage the wall. And then we mm -hmm. had to fix this. We had to fix that. Um, so that is really important on, on how do you, how do you deal with the damages how do you, how quickly you get paid and what's the process right of filing a claim for um for you know what has happened right exactly so just understand all of those things up front so that there are no surprises on the back end so there are different types of movers like we talked about some of them only do local moves some of them do like regional moves and some of them will do cross country or long distance moves even overseas moves so you need to pick the right mover according to you know what your needs are because there are price price differences usually um like local movers they charge by the hour that can range from like 100 to 150 dollars an hour for a two to three person crew so based upon the size of your property, how much time you have, maybe you want to double that crew if you have a larger home and have more than two to three people moving. Maybe you need, you know, four or five or six people helping you move. Maybe you need more than one truck. Those are all things that you need to, to figure out. And usually moving companies, at least the good ones, do have an estimator that will come out, take a look at the number of bedrooms you have, the size of your home, the amount of stuff you have, and give you an idea of, you know, how long the move will take and how large of a truck they need. Um, long distance moves are usually a little bit more expensive. They range between 2,500 to 5,000. And I think that's on the low side saying that, but that's what was quoted to me. If that's for an average size home, whatever they're de determining as an average size home. I don't think there is an average size home here in Atlanta, but depending upon the distance, the weight and additional services, I've seen moves that can cost up to 
$45,000, depending upon what's being moved and how large of a house is being moved. So um, additional costs, like we said before, is something you should always ask about. Packing services, storage, specialty items such as pianos or large pieces of furniture, and insurance. Always ask about insurance costs. Don't forget, you might need pet care and you might need a hotel as well. <laughs> Don't forget about those things. Yeah, I think we you know, really touched everything. Was there anything else we wanted to add about moving? And uh, I think we, we gave a lot of great tips. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people, they don't move as often, so they don't, they forget about these things. So right. that's why we're here to give you some guidance and help you too. And mm -hmm. I always say three movers, that's it. So anyway, that's all about moving. Let's segue into our next thing about what we love about North Atlanta. And today, what we love about North Atlanta is the arts and the culture in mm -hmm. North Atlanta. Absolutely. There's a wealth of opportunities here in Atlanta to enjoy the arts and the culture, the local local culture, the, the broader area culture, the history of the area, and so much more. Um, right here in Alpharetta, we have an Alpharetta Arts Center. Um, there's also, you know, history museums right here in the area. There are art galleries here in Alpharetta, Everywhere, Roswell, yeah. and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are rotating uh, displays and projects that rotate throughout the area of different uh, art pieces and so forth. Um, there are a lot of educational programs that you can take care of, uh, take advantage of, I mean, through different communities, their musical experiences. Mary Ellen and I were recently at an event and we met the Alpharetta um, Symphony uh, organizer or conductor as well and she was very very interesting to talk to about where they play and what pieces they play and um this also ties into i've been down to the atlanta symphony they have a beautiful symphony hall in the midtown area that you can take advantage of um but one thing I, I want to stress to everybody is there are also tons of volunteer opportunities in the arts and the culture here in Atlanta, such as at the Atlanta Botanical Gardens. That's a great place to volunteer. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So um, there's just so much to do here. And it's just... That's why we love North yeah. Atlanta. That's why we, we love do. Atlanta. There's just so much. The Fox Theater. I mean, just so many museums, so many places to go, so much culture. And I think there's something for everybody here. So I think that that's mm -hmm. why it's a great, a great place to be in. Okay. Let's go on to our design tip or tips of the day. What are we talking about today? Well, I have two tips for us today. The first one is to add an unexpected accent somewhere in your home, whether it's a little vignette of where you've added wallpaper just to one room. I just saw this adorable um, multi-purpose loft space that can be used for an office or a guest space or just a space to sit and relax and read and watch TV. And um, on the wall where the office desk is located they put some really cool wallpaper just on this one little wall oh, cool. and it just really tied the space together so put something unexpected in your space and it will add interest to that space it could be an oversized light fixture it could be just something that has a little different style to it that really just is an accent piece that your friends and family will notice and want to talk about Cool. What's the second one? Put some effort into your entryway. You walk in and out of this space all the time. This is our main, you know, this is what we come home to. This is what we have to be organized when we leave. So spend some time and effort and make that first impression count in that space. Um, it's going to, it needs to be a space that's welcoming to not just you, but to your guests as well. And it needs to, you know, be organized, put a little bowl there. So you have a place to put your keys or even your mints that you like to put in your pocket before you leave. Um, things like that. Put a mirror in that space so that you can see what you look like and check yourself before you go we out really the door. Want to do that. <laughs> Make sure you look good when you go out the door. Put a little thought into that space. Make it functional. Make it pretty. 
and it'll make you feel good about your home and keep you more organized. That's great. Those are great tips. So thanks for our design tips. And thanks for listening to our uh, talking all about moving and the tricks and the Oh my goodness, so many tricks and and hacks about moving and questions to ask. And uh, we just had a had a great um, session here and uh, follow us on social media. And if you want to join our weekly newsletter, we have that for the Milton and Alpharetta area that talks all about what events are going on. And that's about it. So Sue, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. And everybody have a great day. Thanks for listening.